Welcome, Meekhawks. Really appreciate you guys all being here today. For those of you who don't know, this is the inaugural Take Human Action Tour event. This is our uh, attempt at college outreach and recruitment, which is woefully underdeveloped, so we're trying to lead on that. So hope to have you all with us moving forward with this program as we take it around the country. So if those of you who don't know what the Mises Caucus is all about, we are Ron Paul revolutionizing the Libertarian Party. We are doing that through a decentralized revolution. That means local focus. That means aiming for sheriff, for city council, for mayor, for school board, and shooting for nullification. Working issues with other groups, non-libertarians, on issues of overlap where we can earn their trust and we can actually move liberty forward at the local level in pocket, and create pockets of liberty all over the country. That is our mission, as well as education of the Austrian School of Libertarianism and moving the message forward and shifting the culture so that maybe one day we can start to shift the, the lagging indicator of politics. So we're going to get things kicked off. I won't stay up here too long, but uh, this is a, uh, a free-to-attend event, so we've got a QR code if any of you guys want to donate to Mises Pack and help us with that mission. Help us get, where is she? Where's Angela with her awesome dress? Uh, she's out there. Well, if you want to help support Angela become the next chair of the Libertarian Party National Committee, please become a recurring donor so we, we can support our delegates, make it happen, and complete the takeover. <laughs> Additionally, any, anybody who is here from Virginia, Paul, stay stand up. Anybody who's here from Virginia, please talk to Paul. Paul will get you linked up. Paul will get you linked up here with the, uh, the Virginia party. and He's good people, good stuff going on here in Virginia. All right, so to kick things off, we got Maj Touré. Maj is the founder of Black Guns Matter, which takes the message of the Second Amendment and self-defense into the inner city around the country and teaches people about their, the history of gun rights, their gun rights, self-defense, and conflict de-escalation. He's got a talk entitled, Why All Gun Control is Racist. What's up? What's up? What's up? Y'all can hear me? Um, how many people in here don't like me? <laughs> Nobody answered. That's good and bad. There should be some dislike. We shouldn't di agree. We shouldn't, you shouldn't all agree on every point. You shouldn't. I'm gonna say some things on here today that you're allowed to, allow, right? Allowed to disagree with. Can I move this or no? See, like even this, I, get the, I have the ability to say I don't want this here. <laughs> right? Um, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because a movement has to be um, an actual movement. I didn't set that up that way to move something as I said movement. That's just <laughs> how it played out. A movement is where we struggle around ideas. Some things we're going to agree on, basic core fundamental stuff we're all going to agree on, right? Some things we're not going to agree on, and that's fine. As long as we disagree and can still move forward with the movement, that's great. You're not going to like the things that I say on this stage, some of them. Some of them you might just be like, no, I'm in, I'm in sync with the vast majority of, of them, right? Um, so the conversation, how many people first and foremost believe that phrase? You don't have to d agree with it. How many people believe that phrase that all gun control is racist? Better question, who disagrees? Nobody? Oh, okay, that's fair. There's libertarians in the room. <laughs> so this is not going to be a traditional let me just talk and you guys don't get to say anything back. You know how you go to church and a guy up front says everything and you have to agree with him and be quiet. That's not what this is going to be. All right. So we came up with this thing called Black Guns Matter a few years back. Right. In the 2015 going into the 2016 election, we heard a bunch of people talking about a voter's registration drive, especially I live in Philly. Right. Voter's registration drive, voter's registration, voter's registration. And me and my friends were like, yo, we need a like a people need to buy guns drive. Right. <laughs> 
And so what happened, and when you say that in a city that's 60, 70% Democrat, everybody says, oh no, that's a bad thing. Guns are bad, so forth and so on. So we disagreed. And we created an event called Black Guns Matter, because at that same time, it seemed like, for some strange reason, right around like national elections, Black Lives Matter kicks up. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's just what I happen to notice, right? So when that happened, we're like, well, if black life matters, we should have the means to defend that black life with black firearms. Seems to make sense. They don't have to be competing ideologies. One can complement the other without arguing, right? So we do this and we have this event, and it was initially gonna be one event called Black Guns Matter. We thought, okay, we'll get 30 people. 300 people show up. People show up from Brooklyn, from New Jersey, from like, and I'm like, bro, we can't even, you're in a different jurisdiction. We can't even really, it's a different set of rules that your overlords have for you there, right? So then we start to recognize that, man, it's crazy as we delve into this, the areas that have the most violent crime have the most disrespect for the basic fundamental right to keep and bear arms. Then when you peel that onion back a little bit more, you start to recognize that the areas where there's the most restriction is predominantly black folk. It's not me saying it to make all of the white people in here mad. I'm not saying that statement to make all of the white people in here feel good. That's just the truth of the matter. The areas where there is the highest levels of restrictions of the human right, because that's what the, con the framer said, this is a human right, the areas where there's the most disrespect for that fundamental supreme law of the land is where there's the most black, brown, melanated beings. Now, that's a phrase that I want everybody to write down, pull out your sweatshop phones, type it in, <laughs> right? Melanated beings. So this course today, or this speech or presentation, is to one, give you some tools to engage, right, to combat against this racism called gun control, as well as how to deal with people, because how many people in here identify as African American? One, <laughs> two, me, three, right? Those are rookie numbers in the liberty movement. Four, 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 <laughs> right? Rookie numbers, which means you folks that are less melanated are gonna be conflicted with this argument that generally happens on the left, and I'll do this a lot, because like, if you believe that there's still sides, like left and right, like the duopoly is different, maybe you're not as libertarian as you, you know, might got some more studying to do. However, in those areas where you try to highlight this extreme contradiction, you're gonna be labeled things. You are. You're the white hope. You're trying to save black people. You're trying to X, Y, and Z. All of these different things. So you have to have correct terminology to fight at least, a, you know, maneuver around certain arguments before they even come. So some of the statements, terms, um, practices, and tactics from today's breakdown will give you something to go into your overall strategy to neutralize that. Does that make sense? All right, so one of those is melanated beings. People of color, let's reverse, stop for a second. Imagine if some older white dude, who's the oldest white dude in here? <laughs> Boom, these guys are battling out for it, right? Now imagine if you didn't know he's a libertarian, right? And he comes up to someone and says, well, you know, the colored people, that's what people of color is. So when you say POC, people of color, it's the same thing, it's the same thing. So I'm not, listen, I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna trip about it. Me, I'm like, I know the intent behind what you said, right, the energy. But you're going to be talking about liberty because the point here is to spread liberty into rooms that it currently isn't in. Urban America, black communities, there's only four black folk, highly melanated beings in this room. So you have to have tools to communicate with the opposition in those rooms that you're going into. So one of those terms is stop saying people of color. Say melanated beings. Who, white people got melanin. Maybe trace amounts of it. <laughs> but it's a tool to neutralize an argument beforehand. Does that make sense for everybody? So everybody say it with me, melanated beings. Melanated. Boom, does anybody feel offended by that term? No. Okay, so the areas that had more concentration of melanated beings 
Historically, not even just that first couple of months where we peeling back this onion, historically, these areas seem to be the areas where the violent crime and the restriction on your human right to keep and bear arms go together. Now, that could be a coincidence. In my first objective mind, I go, well, you know, there's a lot of crime in those areas, because that's what you'll run up against. Well, of course, there's a lot of gun restrictions there. There's a lot of crime there. There's more guns there. Then you start to peel that onion back more and you go, well, because the argument will be, one of the statements will be, Chicago has a problem with gun violence. It's just the people of Chicago, it's Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. Then they'll say, they're getting the guns from Indiana. <laughs> and they're bringing them to Chicago. Okay, that's, I get it. If that's what your position is, cool then how come the violent crime levels aren't the same in Indiana where they got the guns from, if it's the gun? Simple phrase, and everybody go, no, you don't get those. Your so-called opposition will say you don't get it, and you do get it. Simple phrases, do not argue and be antagonistic. They have already attempted to label you by your skin tone, and I'm saying this to y'all as a person that recognizes that systemic oppression and racism does exist, it does. It's not to the extent that mainstream media tries to highlight it, but I'm saying this as a person that looks at you as allies, okay? You have to have the tools to avoid certain fights to get to the movement of liberty. You, in essence, are walking around attempting to share a concept with people to get in alignment with our human right to keep and bear arms to defend life that have been thoroughly conditioned by the agent Smiths of the world. You are literally walking around as like Morpheus, trying to wake people up, but they're still plugged into a system. I don't want to antagonize the alarms. Y'all, anybody here seen the movie Inception? I don't want their subconscious to attack you. I just want you to maneuver around that. Don't get into that fight if you don't have to. So they'll say, well, I don't know, man. It can't be just the legislation. Then you start to peel it back and you give them room. Well, that may be true. That may be accurate. So let's go back, let's pick a different, let's go the opposite. In order for this scientific approach to hold weight, I gotta be able to, you gotta stand up to the mustard, right? I gotta create the inverse to test it. I think this, but I gotta beat it up a little bit to see if it stands firm, right? So let's go to the areas of places that have more guns, not the more restrictions, that have more guns and more respect for the Second Amendment. Anybody in here know what state for the last four or five years has been uh, identified as like the best state for gun owners in America? Nope, not Texas, Texas is horrible. New Hampshire, kinda, maybe New Hampshire. Arizona, Arizona. Texas, let's go back to those states. Texas has horrible gun laws. They just got constitutional carry. They're not, not horrible, they're not as bad as Massachusetts right, or Cali or Jersey or New York. But Texas has good gun culture. Gun culture means, hey, the rules may not be that great, but the general consensus of the people is we're gonna be safe and responsible gun owners. That culture translates into the bad guys that may wanna rape that young lady. Ah, there's a 70% chance that she might shoot me because I'm in Texas. Most people have fire, a lot of people have firearms, right? If I'm the robber, do I rob that house? No, because there's a chance that I might run into some two, two, three rounds, okay? So Texas has good gun culture. They just got constitutional carry not long ago, but that culture can shift the politic. You get what I'm saying? So, Arizona, is anybody, use your sweatshop phone. What, where does Arizona rank in rapes? 50? It's low. It's really, really low. The state, very low. Where does Arizona rank in burglaries? Really, really low, right? Pick New Hampshire. Anybody know the violent crime rate in New Hampshire? Now pause. When you start to say these things, people are gonna say, well, it's about population density. It's a smaller state. It, 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 it. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. They're gonna say it. You have to have things in position to neutralize that. Now, let's get back to the point of the conversation though. How does that tie into gun control being racist? 
well, that's just a population thing. There's a lot of crime, and those sound valid on the surface. But then you peel that onion back a little bit more, and you go, well, wait a minute. When those dudes wrote down the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, when they had those rumbles, the Federalist Papers, the, all of these different things, at that time when they were forming this place, all of America was technically kind of like a constitutional carry country. Like the whole place, you just have a gun. Just don't shoot anybody with it unnecessarily. It's very simple, <laughs> right? If you do, you go to jail. It's very simple. When did that change? When did it go from, well, and I'm not talking about modern. Let's go modern or all the way back as far as you can remember or know. When did it change that America, land of the free, home of the brave, decided to be, well, just hold on now with too much freedom? Reconstruction, post-slavery? What if I told you that gun control in America is older than America itself? Like when it was like beating the shit out of the black people, now this is the awkward part of the conversation. <laughs> when they were beating the shit out of my ancestors, now I'm saying my because I'm, my elders may or may not have been on these lands called Turtle Island at one point, but the truth of the matter is I don't know. Remember in the Matrix when he was telling Neo, hey, we think it's the year 2000, but truthfully, we don't know. My community doesn't generally know, because at a certain point, indigenous people were also classified as Negroes. So the whole like, I got Indian in my family thing, that's like, comes from somewhere. So saying all of that to say, even when these great guys that wrote all of this stuff down, it was like, yo, freedom, the fucking country gonna be lit. We can say whatever we want. Then if somebody disagrees, we have guns to defend what the fuck we just said. It's gonna be great. Dudes was having entire hemp farms, right? Benjamin Franklin was doing all kind of wild shit, <laughs> right? So all of these things are happening. But while they're saying, hey, we're gonna do these things, they had huge contradictions. While Thomas Jefferson was penning like the Declaration of Independence, he owned people. Now some people in this room right now are gonna go, well, well maybe not, I don't know, I could be wrong. Well, that was the norm then. That was how it went then. Cool, I can get with that, but you can't write all men are created equal, free, 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 and still hold on to that ideology. It is a contradiction. It's a contradiction. These beings were not gods. They weren't like fucking Hercules, demigods. It, was, it just wasn't. They was dudes. They was actually a bunch of Philly hood dudes. That's what they were, right? Yeah, it wasn't all from Philly, but y'all get my point, right? So with that being the case, that's another thing. Do not be afraid to expose that contradiction. You have to tell that side. You have to put them together all of the time because you'll look like you're deifying a group of people and the opposition will exploit that. You can't say gun control was racist. We, all, we in here just recognize gun control was created. Slave codes, black codes. These are not things that I'm making up or saying to sound like, ooh, victim mindset. I'm saying this is the actual history. It's the history. So when you leave one part of it out and then say, yeah, gun control is racist, but don't have a communicative way of translating what actually happened, the other side will eat you alive. They're gonna win, because I know I would. I would destroy you, right? So when someone says to me, how can you quote Thomas Jefferson? I go, well, because what he wrote down was dope. But the house that my grandmother bought years ago, when she bought the house, they sent her a thing saying, yo, Thomas Jefferson actually owned this house. And it was like a house that he, no, if I'm lying, I'm flying. It was a house that he had for like his side joints that he had babies with, the slaves. So my point in saying all of this, when you don't tell the whole truth or you don't curate that sentence properly, you open yourself up to that argument and you argue against the point of, nah, those guys did some great stuff Notice they always say guys, they never mention any of the women that did the great stuff. 
But those guys did some great stuff, but they had their contradictions. One of those contradictions was allowing, and I'm not just talking about the founding fathers. One of those contradictions of people from that time was they literally went against the supreme law of the land and made legislation saying, yeah, guns are good for except you blacks. Anybody that wants to challenge me on that, I'm gonna absolutely devour you, but you're welcome to raise your hand and get lit the fuck up up here, <laughs> okay? Now, does this mean the things that I'm saying, does this mean that I hate this nation? No. no. Will you be targeted if you say these things that you're a commie? Yes. Unless you articulate these points thoroughly. And then I do the sandwich thing. I say the empathy thing, then I say the fact, then I go back to some more empathy. The facts is in there. I'm just gonna lead with the empathy. First step, everybody write this down. Or type it in, because y'all, none of you have pens or fucking paper, because <laughs> you've not been conditioned to do so. One dude, rookie number, two dudes, three. Oh, right, it's libertarians, I forgot. You guys actually <laughs> fucking read and write, okay? You lead with empathy. Now, we're gonna get back to the whole racism thing, whatever, whatever, but it's more important for me to make sure that you have the tools to combat the simple fact that gun control is and has historically been racist. All right, first, when you're communicating this to a demographic that you're trying to reach, first, lead with empathy. That's the first step of a three-step process of the solutionary method or the solutionary lifestyle. Empathy, why empathy? Does anybody want to, why empathy? Anybody know? Go. Boom, that's, that's literally where the slang phrase of, I feel you, comes from. No, I didn't hear you, it aims at, yo, I hear you. No, I hear you could be kind of dismissive. No, 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 I feel you, I feel you. That's what she said. <laughs> right? So empathy, you have to lead with empathy. The second step on that is facts. Facts are cold, but they're important. Facts are cold. When you hear people saying, um, okay, I'll give you a perfect example. Some of the people that identify as conservatives, they are not conservatives. They are super duper statists, right? They identify as conservative and they say things like, well, police brutality towards the black community is such a small component, that shouldn't be the thing that you lead with. And factually, they're correct. White dudes are actually beat up and shot by police more than black people. It's just the facts. White dudes, you, I mean, your turn to fuck. Like, it's your turn, <laughs> right? However, when I say to that person, right, that may have had a trauma, may have been, had a negative interaction with an agent of the state, and when I go, well, it's not that fucking bad. <laughs> I mean, compared to all of the heart disease, why are you bitching about, like, your dad's lung cancer? That's a fact but it's not, it's cold. When you lead with facts, you lose the person. Every time. If you don't tell me how amazing the Eagles are, and then you talk about the fact that they beat us last week, you lost me, I tapped out. Y'all get what I'm saying? So second is facts. Third, now that that person has recognized, this person empathizes with me, not pandering to. I understand, or empathy. Yo, man, this shit seems fucked up, but as a white dude, I don't have that experience. My experience in rural America, I'm listening to what your experience is with law enforcement in urban America, but I don't have that same experience. Tell me more. Empathy, it's not pandering. It's not like getting on the libertarian national Twitter and like highlighting all of this fucking leftist garbage. It's not that. I'm not saying that, has that happened? I don't, I don't think that happened, I'm just asking. I don't, I don't know if that's happened or not. I'm just, I'm just, just, just comes to mind, okay? So we're not here to pander, we're here to tell the truth and be empathetic for that fellow human, right? So that's the first step. Now, to the brother's point over there, I understand that you kind of give a damn about me and what I'm going through. Now you'll share, that, um, that person will be a little bit more receptive to the facts, right? A sentence could generally go like, 
yo, man, I, I kind of, I, I, I feel where you're coming from, feel. I feel where you're coming from. Because my experience in, in suburban, we got a sheriff. We got deputies. Y'all got police officers, and it's a lot more people. And I don't know, people's feelings might be a little bit more on the edge. So I feel you on that. So I've talked about the feeling. I've talked about the fact that where I live in comparison to where you live. And I went right back to the I feel you again. It's the sandwich. So that's one and two. The third one is, once they've expressed that they, in your body language, that you, you know, they'll, you'll see it, right, in their body language or whatever, then you can come up with the solution together. You're trying to tell me a fucking solution for something that you have, I haven't even ascertained that you have any facts, and I haven't even ascertained, going back a step, that you even care about me. I'm not, I'm not, oh, we ain't the same. Where have we connected first? Where have you developed that rapport? This conversation is, or this, uh, is this uh, approach is gonna translate more than just the conversation about gun control being racist. It's gonna translate into the conversation about the neighborhood that you live in in Philadelphia is a blue city surrounded by a bunch of red folks, but maybe you guys should go a little bit more on the purple side to kind of push back against that. The reason why is because your city of Philadelphia, they're literally making gun control rules. Philadelphia is 60 to 70% black and brown people. The rest of Pennsylvania is a open carry state. In the city of Philadelphia, they tell you, you have to spend $20 to get a license to carry your firearm concealed. That is literally against the law. That is a municipality making a statute that's unconstitutional and it supersedes or attempts to supersede state constitution. Article 1, Section 21 of the Philadelphia, excuse me, Pennsylvania uh, con uh, Constitution says, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be questioned. There's no fucking question. Don't ask me. <laughs> Mind your business. That's literally what it says. Okay? Now, translating that to someone, if you're from rural or suburban America, under that position, that creates an alliance. But it gotta be genuine. You genuinely have to have a heart for liberty to be like, one, yeah, gun control is racist. Two, here are the facts that support that claim. Three, it shouldn't be that way. Four, we need alliances in the areas that we traditionally are not in. A friend of mine, Kimberly Klasick, is she's a, and some of my friends are Democrat, Republican, I don't care. I don't give a shit what you are. I don't. Are you about liberty? I don't care. I don't care. Most people are about liberty. Once you get past their conditioning, and it's not some people, you just won't. Liberty means, yo, they want to participate in a racist practice of gun control. They have the right to do so. Right? So, Kimberly Klasick is a f friend of mine that's on the right, right? She's a Republican. She raised $8 million by telling the truth about something in, uh, like Baltimore, right? There are literally people telling her that you shouldn't run in unwinnable districts. And I get it on a number scale of it. I get it politically. W then we shouldn't be even fucking here <laughs> as libertarians. But you know what's happening right now in the gun control movement or anti-gun control movement or liberty movement or the government is completely shit movement right now? They are messing up so horribly that they are handing you guys layups and alley-oops. You just gotta have, legit, you just have to have the right messaging that's not off-putting. We are watching the government, literally. Hell yeah, we're gonna take your ARs. We're gonna take your AR-15s, Beto, right? We're watching that. We're watching everything that you as the conspiracy theorist, libertarian has been saying, but you gotta embrace that. And dealing with that demographic with tangible things to make them understand like, yo, maybe this is the direction that I should go. You're just informing people. That's it. So let's go back a bit. She raised this $8 million. They're telling her it's unwinnable, which is stupid to me because like, that's like the premise of every fucking Rocky movie. <laughs> this guy's just, you can't win. <laughs> no, Drago was, was rough. Drago, I was like, nah, this dude's done. This is absolutely done. This fucking dude's taking steroids. Drago's going to kill this guy. Um, saying that to say, you're in essence in the same position, but the government is, the state is actually hooking you up. Now, when we isolate back to uh, gun control, all of the facts are in your favor. 
All of the facts are in your favor. Your approach is what's been um, lacking. America, the land that we love. Pre-America, a lot of fucked up shit happening. Tell the full truth. Start that if that person is interested in firearms, when you're trying to get them to the liberty movement, start that with, yeah, man, it's crazy, these gun control laws that are targeting, do not say fucking minorities. What's the root word of minority? Smaller, we don't care about you. Collectively, white people are actually the minority globally. It's not me making that up. It's not me saying that to be offensive. It's just shifting your perspective a little bit, right? It's just what it is, right? We don't even fuck with that census shit. So that 13% we've been holding for like 80 years, I don't even trust that, (laughs) right? But not minority. Yo, it's, it's, I don't like the fact that they're targeting your community where there's mostly melanated beings with this racist practice of gun control. It's a contradiction. Who can argue against that? Someone please right now, legit question, request. Try to argue against, hey, I don't like the fact that the community that you live in, that I don't, I'm not, ne- I'm not as impacted initially by, I don't like that they're targeting your community with unconstitutional rules, in essence, telling you that you're not human enough. Tell me how you argue against that. You can't. It's factually accurate, it's empathetic, and it's not you pandering. And that's just what you can do for gun control. So let's go back a bit, or speed up. Does anybody, everybody stand with me? All right, because I'm not boring y'all to sleep. Question. Hell no. No, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> Bam, libertarians, microphones. Um, a lot of people use gun control because it makes them feel safe. Like mm-hmm. right now in Philadelphia, they have like a whole, they're giving out grants to combat gun violence. I'm lining up for one of them grants too. So I'm just <laughs> interested to know sort of like what you would say to somebody who says like, well, there's a lot of violence in my community and I'm not comfortable having a gun. Mm -hmm. Like if there's somebody who doesn't want to own a gun Mm -hmm. and is experiencing a lot of gun violence in their community, sort of like, what would you tell them? I guess get a gun, but- Nope, um, I wouldn't tell them that. Yeah, so I'm interested to know some of that stuff. (laughs) I wouldn't never tell anybody to get a gun that don't want one. I'll say you shouldn't have a gun. You don't want one. More for me, fuck out of here. (laughs) <laughs> Give, sell it to me. <laughs> no, the reason why I say it that way is because I try to, her question, everyone heard her question? What would we say to someone that's like, yo, the violence is crazy and I don't feel comfortable because it's kind of a two-part question. The violence is, Philadelphia cracked over 400 homicides last week. 400 dead, gone, right? The violence in Philadelphia is crazy, but I also don't feel comfortable with a gun. Great, don't get a gun until you're comfortable. Your body, your choice, right? I would recommend, hey, how comfortable are you with flashlights? And they'll go, it's a flashlight, I don't care, it's a flashlight, cool. This is a deterrent, light deterrent. How comfortable are you with a knife, right? How comfortable are you with pepper spray, mace, bear spray, whatever? I wanna meet that person with their level of comfort because that's empathy. I don't know what trauma this person has had in regards to firearms that has them having maybe one of those 400 bodies that I just view as a number was a family member. So I I identify with the actual trauma first. And then I say, I want you when you're comfortable to have the means to defend yourself. So I'd lean that person into, well, when you get out of your vehicle, right? Because most assailants don't like the element of surprise. When you, I would teach that person how to scan and assess a room when they're getting out of their vehicle. I would show that person how to get, you know, when you're going from a transitional space and a transitional space from one place to another, I give them other information that gives them some sort of tool to their level of comfort, right? And then if they say, yeah, I'm good, I'm cool with a knife, I'd also let them know stabbing somebody's very personal. I'm 
we married while I'm stabbing you. We're together, okay? And when I share that with him, it's like firearms, if you train, you actually are gonna, I need more distance to shoot you. I don't need more distance, but you get my point. I share information with that person to where they're comfortable at. And if they still land at, I'm not comfortable with a gun, great. I'm glad that they have that level of uh, self-awareness and honesty about it. Because some people, some, well, y'all may or may not know. How many people in here, if, if you choose to identify, um, did military service? You know there's a guy in your unit that's not a fucking shooter? He has a gun. He's, you're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. I'd rather that person be really clear on what they are and what they aren't, as opposed to making them be something that I want them to be. He ain't gonna shoot shit. He's not gonna bust a grape in a fruit fight. Okay? Let him be that. We can find another position in the army for that person. To force them, or say, well, you gotta get a gun. We not turning people away from liberty. We, and that liberty might mean they might vote for somebody completely different than me. They might not, you know, they may, they may actually turn to be anti-gun. The question then we gotta ask is, are we really about that freedom shit? Because freedom ain't just the things that we agree with. You know what I'm saying? So that would be my approach there. Uh, brother back there, who was that? Brother right there. And then I'll be like, get a motherfucking gun, bro. You tripping. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I guess traditionally or for many years, uh, I think the narrative was about guns bad. We rely on the police to protect us. Mm -hmm. And it seems like in recent years, that's shifted dramatically to now police are the problem. Mm -hmm. And so is there an opportunity there to shift the narrative around, well, there's problems with police, so it's important that we have guns and we set up uh, better ways of protecting our neighborhood, yep. fighting crime locally. Yep. Um, good, excellent question. And I'm not, you know how people be like, oh, that's a great question, and it's not really a great question. That actually was a good question, <laughs> right? Because it deals with the tactic of how do we take advantage of this. There's nowhere in urban America that you're going to go and ask four dudes and four women and say, hey, do you trust the police? And they're going to be like, absolutely. No, they're not. And it's been heightened. The irony is, this current administration, again, that layup, main man literally got on television and said, our fucking patience is wearing thin with you American subjects. If, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I couldn't have wrote that better for us. So in essence, you say, to that person I say, I don't make it the police. It's, they have friends and family members that are law enforcement, that are military. I say the state. When I used to work at Foot Locker, I remember this one time, this lady came in with her son, and her son said, I want some Jordans. And I remember this shit like yesterday. The mom said, Michael Jordan is already rich. You better get you some Nikes. <laughs> And in my mind, I'm like, does she know? No, she doesn't know who Phil Knight is. She hasn't identified Phil Knight, the dude that created Nike, with the guy that actually pays, at the time, paid the Jordan brand. There was a disconnect. Nike's just a check to her, right? And she wound up getting a pair of Nikes that was like $20 cheaper than the Jordans. Point is, she had identified that with a person. When you're talking about police are horrible, somebody might have friends, family, and it's a humanistic thing. Yo, I don't wanna, I don't wanna make people for doing, doing my job. I don't want, they're not at that point yet. If they're asking you that question, they're not at that point. So I would say, well, I wouldn't necessarily say it's just police or it's all police. I would say the state and the legislation that it creates is an opposition to liberty, and those police officers that may have initially took that job to do good now find themselves following uh, ordinances, statutes, and commands from people that are putting them in a position to violate their oath to the Constitution. Does that make me sound anti-police? Nope. Can you argue that I'm now anti-police? Nope, don't have to fight that fight. And you get that person to think about the state and the overreaching government as the problem, which it is. It is. This is a rumble of hearts and minds. 
You are literally persuading people to think in their own interest. And you are fighting against Bernays, propaganda, like all of this shit. You gotta be on point. The fight is everywhere. It might be popping up at gas stations and be like, oh, it's an opportunity to tell this person about liberty. You gotta do the same thing. So in those spaces, that's how I would tell that person. I don't wanna, I, and I would say that. I don't wanna necessarily say it's officers per se. However, the state and the politicians that also don't care about law enforcement, because they put law enforcement in that position to violate their oath to the Constitution and violate your individual liberties. The people writing laws are the problem. That doesn't excuse the officers that are executing those unconstitutional orders. I've tied everybody in from an empathetic space, factually, and we got to a solution which would be we have to stop supporting law enforcement officers and police unions and politicians that are in alignment with more violations of our individual liberties. It's fucking unbeatable. You cannot fight against this argument. You can't. You can't call me anti-cop because then I'm gonna play the victim. I can't believe that you would say that to me. I can't. <laughs> I have friends and family that are law enforcement officers. I want them to come home every night. But I cannot deny because of their profession that they're in alignment with doing things that are in alignment with our violations. You have to tell the whole story the whole time. If I cut off either section of that, either side can get me. If it's the conservative, like, officer tantrum, he's such a bitch. He's such a bitch, <laughs> right? But if I leave off the Police officers are human and deserve to go home. They took a job and da 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 and still be critical of that job. If I leave out that part, they'll go, this guy's anti-cop. Then they'll rile up the Blue Lives Matter people and I'll get threats in California again like I did when they said I threatened all of California law enforcement. <laughs> I was fucking asleep. I didn't have shit to do with that. I wasn't even, you know what I'm saying? So my pointing that is you have to do it. The, you are now charged as libertarians with the responsibility of explaining the thing fully every time. Every time, or don't do the job. Go be a Democrat, it'll be super easy. <laughs> They're gonna like give you money and shit, it's gonna be super lit for a minute, then till your consciousness kicks up again. Does that make sense? You have to tell this whole story, how much time I got, oh, I'm, I'm good? Damn, that shit flew by. Q and a, yeah, let's just do more Q&As. All right, so wait, real quick, who got the next question? Get him the mic, real quick. Are we in agreement that gun control historically is racist, or do you need another example? I can give you one. Another example? This, we not too far, North Carolina, like right under us, right? Right, I think, geography, <laughs> right? <laughs> North Carolina's state constitution, and I'm a paraphrase so I won't butcher it too much, all free men, didn't say women, because sexism's a part of this. All free men can keep and bear arms, paraphrase. Then they, er, record scratch. All free white men, literally, that's what they did. It's not me making it up. The black codes, Louisiana, was like anyone that, any white man that sees a Negro that has something that could look like a weapon is within their rights to kill him. That's like legislation. That's not me making this shit up. That's not me. We do have really cool t-shirts that say all gun control is racist, right? Blackgunsmattershop.com. But <laughs> it's, not, it's not like a, I'm just saying this because it's a cool t-shirt. It's real. It's real. And that's, remember we said America, the country that we love that we're fighting to defend? all the way back here to fucked up shit happen. That was before America was America. Gun control in this country is older than this country. So some of those people that, like extreme lefties that go, oh man, it's systemically racist. I can point to why they say that. Yeah, that's the root right there. That, look, this was before like that. And even after that, you guys still contradicted the supreme law of the land. We have to call both of those. Who's the next question? Right here. Uh, thank you. Um, so, oh, cool. Um, so, uh, I've got a million questions, but I think the most <laughs> pragmatic one that I would like to ask is, if you feel comfortable recommending something, 
if I wanted to put my money where my mouth is as a gun owner, mm -hmm. which advocacy groups mm -hmm. would you recommend I actually donate to? Yeah. I'm thinking like Firearms Policy Coalition. That's my guy. Brandon and them guys are great over there. Okay. Are there are there any other ones you would recommend like VCDL or something yep. to follow here in Virginia? Me too. But like, I mean, I'm just curious, could you talk more about that? Yeah. Because uh, for me, like, so just, I look at the NRA as like cannon fodder mm -hmm. for the media. I don't really view them as a pro-gun organization. The, the, the NRA is a law enforcement organization. Please, can you elaborate on all of that, please? So, so I'll go to that statement first, because that could seem loaded. I'm not saying that they're the police, but they kind of the police. They, they have been behind all of the anti-gun legislation on a national level since the 1960s. Now, the thing to that is, again, we can't just stop there, because I got to tell the whole truth. The NRA didn't start that way. Now, nor, nor in the 70s, when Mr. Knox and his team over in Cincinnati was doing that coup, right? They were like, yo, this ain't about hunting, this ain't this, that, and the third. So there's a convoluted history with the NRA, but currently as it stands since the 1960s, they have been behind all of the anti-gun legislation on a national level since the Panthers. That was Reagan. So when my, my Republican homies is like, Reagan was the shit. My drug dealing homies is like, Reagan was dope because he let that coke in here, right? <laughs> But, but, on a, he, like, Maine man didn't, he wasn't good for the second amendment. Maine, Reagan literally, and was down with that same wave, was like, I don't, this video. There's no reason that any American citizen should walk the streets with a loaded gun. That's a direct quote from Ronald Reagan, who was down with that whole vibe. So that current crop is tied into that racism. You talk about Reagan who supported that Mulford Act. Everybody in here knows about the Mulford Act. It's not new science. Right? So we ain't the CDC, we're not making the science up as we go along, <laughs> right? So, the Mulford Act was directly in relation to the Black Panthers who, everyone can agree, that's like a journalist term, you say that to get people to agree, but everyone may not agree. But everyone can agree that in the 60s, black people was getting the shit beat out of us. That's just, hey, you can't like, not me, I wasn't fucking alive, but, you can't drink water here, you can't shop here, whatever. Okay, cool, so we're just gonna patrol our own communities. The NRA was supportive of that legislation, the Mulford Act, that literally like, was the first domino to knock down California's right to keep and bear arms as it stands now. So they were behind that, but you cannot ignore also in the 60s in a different section, they had the only, now this is shorter than legislation that stood, they had the only desegregated shooting range in D.C. So they have a very convoluted history, but currently as they stand, they're not pushing for liberty. They're selling stuff to their four to five million members. And I'm not mad at it as a free enterprise dude, sell your things, right? But there's a hundred million gun owners in America that we know of, that we know of. If I've consistently hovered at four or five million members, why the fuck haven't you got the other 94, 95, 96? Because I only want to sell to four or five million funds. And that's fair. So to go into organizations that I would get behind, Firearms Policy Coalition, write this down. FPC, y'all already know that part. FP, the gun dudes all have identified themselves. Firearms Policy Coalition, um, locally, uh, Virginia Citizens Defense League, um, Gun Owners of America, Right? Gun owners of America, I'm a little, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like pressing them a little bit. Right? But gun owners of America. And if you choose to still be a member of the NRA, be. Because what will happen is, the other side is, I hate the whole like, better them, lesser of two evils thing, right? But the people that are clearly super duper anti-gun are absolutely trying to destroy the NRA too. Now, that may be great for decentralization, because now you got to splinter up a bunch of state organizations, right? But all I'm saying to you is, if you still choose to say, all right, I'll still support them or keep my membership, or even if I'm an instructor, do that. But there's other local organizations, Gun Owners of America and Firearms Policy Coalition are two that I'm a member of. Go ahead, one more. So, so I guess kind of as a follow-up question, is FPC a better investment, or is buying a free printer a better investment? Both. So both are, both things can be true. I have four 3D printers, right? Allegedly. 
right? <laughs> um, but FPC is consistently suing people that violate, and not just class action suits, like, yo, we're gonna get this person, we're gonna sue this city or this state for violating this supreme law of the land, Second Amendment thing. So both of them are important. For your individual shit, you might wanna allegedly get a 3D printer. You know what I'm saying? For your, I wanna support organizations doing that part, FPC. A couple more questions. Him and then, uh, no, like, one woman has answered a question. You guys are sexist. What do you say to the self-professed reasonable man? Uh, you can defend your home with a shotgun. We don't need weapons of war in the streets. Um, you know, stuff like that. It's kind of like middle of the road. Well, yeah. I believe everybody should be able to own a pistol, but maybe we need stricter this or that, and I, that, I don't think yeah. anybody should own an AR-15. and. That kind of thing. What do I say to that person that says that? I go, cool, that's your belief. That I don't, if, they're in, if their attempt is to engage, to antagonize, one, I'm better at putting points together than that person. Because one, I've done actual, like, pay attention to this thing. But if now, so I guess, is that person genuine in their statement? Because they're repeating a script? Or are they just like, Fucking David Hogg. Not David Hogg, but maybe somebody you know in your own. More genuine person. I would go, okay, I understand that. I would first I would say, do you shoot AR 15s? Do you know why um, shotguns may not be? There's a better technology for home defense than a shotgun, which has a little bit of spread, not a huge spread, but has a bit of spread. And what type of home do you live in? Do you have brick walls? Do you have, um, or do you live in a row home that has thin sheetrock in between it? Because all of these things play a part in your choice for your home personal defense. So I'd ask them those questions and get them to tell me more. And then if they start to say, well, I don't, I don't really own a shotgun, an AR, I then, if that person is genuine, I'd say, come on, man, come to a class. Let me show you if you want to. I don't, I don't want to be adversarial with anybody that we don't need to be. I don't want to create any new like enemies for our movement at all. So that's what I would say to that person if they're genuine. If I know that they're like just saying it to try to, if I got time that day and I just like feel like fucking with them, and if I know they're antagonistic, I'll go back and forth, right? But if not, if they're actually more like legit, then I'll give them more questions and information to round out their thought process to make those decisions on their own. Somebody else? Oh, okay. here and then the brother back there. Yeah, this gun dude, yeah. the gun dude. Look, look, they all look alike. They think they're like hiding. <laughs> Fucking lumberjack shirt, baseball you know? hat. <laughs> it's kind of got a little overlap with the last question, but uh, for people who are either on the fence about buying a firearm or being exposed to it or obviously being from Philadelphia and you working a lot in the inner cities about um, bringing people into the fold, what's your best line of questioning or place to find people to begin to expose people to firearm ownership in, in hand? Yeah, good question. Um, it's not, it's not like a, it's not like, hey man, we gonna go down, like, down to Max's Cheesesteaks in Philly and that's where all of the people that are on the fence are at, right? There's no necessarily target rich environment. It's them little spaces and opportunities that you have that you know, it's manipulative. I know if I see some, if I see a middle-aged mom wearing anything that's about America, like on her clothes, I'm, I know I may be a little bit more open to that conversation, or she may be a little bit more open to the conversation, and I'll test the waters to kind of see where we're at. If they already super pro-gun and pro-liberty, cool, high five and we move on. But if it's that person that is really like in between, and they'll identify themselves, just like all of the gun dudes in here identify themselves. You can see it. You're like, cops identify, that haircut, you're a fucking cop. Right? So in those moments are like the, the space to really kind of like lead in. And so and if I was in your shoes, if I see a dude with, uh, what's your favorite hip hop group? Wu-Tang. Oh man, you put me on the spot. Uh, Outcast, whatever it is, right? Tupac. You see an urban dude with a Tupac shirt, bigger than just making them pro-gun, 
it's, it's, it's kind of like in that opportunity, yo, I bang with Tupac. I appreciate that shirt, man. I had, you know, dude was gone way before his time. That little, that's, that, those things are kind of like breaking down the, the matrix's conditioning that you're supposed to be the opposition. And then because all it, lumberjack shirt, lumberjack shirt, lumberjack shirt, lumberjack shirt. <laughs> Since all of y'all kind of look alike, that perception in that person goes like, nah, man, I, like, I, I can't, that's not what, that, that dude was like, he was, he, he, they gave me good vibes. You see what I'm saying? That part and that, that conversation may go somewhere else, but it's not a hard like, we're in the room full of like, here's the target rich room, we're gonna talk about liberty. It's in those five minutes. In those little bitty spaces where I have the opportunity to translate that conversation about liberty, and if it flows into the conversation, it may not flow into the conversation about gun control. Right? It'll flow into the conversation about you at the gas station. And he go, yeah, that Tupac shirt, man, I almost didn't get this joint. Gas prices is so high. Now we're having a conversation about, well, why are the gas prices high? What, 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 do, what does the state and over, you know, regulation do? So the conversations are kind of like in that direction. But you kind of like, you can't go in, like, I don't know how I'm gonna date Rihanna yet. When the opportunity presents itself, I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> and whichever way that the conversation goes, are we gonna be light on our feet to make that happen? It's the same thing for liberty. Does that, does that make sense? A couple more questions? One more. One more? Okay, my bad, y'all. It's too early to get drinks. I would say y'all come have drinks with me after this. But <laughs> so, so is, what, Moses. is what you're trying to do, are you trying to induce cognitive dissonance or avoid it? in the person you're talking to? I'm trying to initially avoid their cognitive dissonance for as long as I can, until I've established a rapport with this person. Once I've established a rapport with this person, their cognitive shit is not gonna be as harsh. In the movie Inception, they made them think that the ideas were their own, and it's manipulative. I'm gonna be very clear about it. Let's be clear. The opposition has been very manipulative on putting that in our baby's mind in the first place. I'm just trying to reverse engineer it to get them to potentially ask a different question. When the cognitive dissonance comes up, hopefully you've established enough rapport that this person feels like, all right, I'm gonna give them a little bit of room. And when you see that tricking up a little bit more, you gotta figure out ways to kinda like go, Nah, 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 bro, I'm not mad, I'm not, I don't wanna argue with you, don't be, like, okay, I'll give you a perfect example. When I go everywhere without a mask on, this is not to shame anyone that chooses to wear a mask, right? When I, cause I don't know your personal status, you might not be able to breathe them fibers in, cause you'll, you know, whatever, I don't care. Or you might have a real autoimmune issue and you try to take an extra precaution, I don't care. When I go places and I don't wear a mask, and when people hound me about the mask, I go, oh man, is you about to call the cops on me? Don't beat me up, man. How, how much was this? Because I'm in a lot that's happened. I was at the grocery store a few days ago. They was like, sir, where's your mask? I'm like, I don't got one, man. Don't tell on me, man. You please don't, you know they're gonna beat me up. Now, if they keep going, I'll keep going. Man, you trying to get me George Floyded out here? <laughs> now something in them goes, oh shit, I'm not, I'm, I'm dealing with this person like not as a human. Right? When that cognitive dissonance kicks up, that's when I go more human. Damn, man, don't. Now, the reality is I got a fucking cannon on me. You're not gonna do anything to me. <laughs> However, I wanna use all of those to, to his point, his, to his question. I wanna use every single one of those opportunities as opportunities and take advantage of them. Whether that's expressing the understanding that all gun control is racist, whether that's expressing the understanding that the Fed shouldn't be here, whether that's expressing the understanding of de decentralization needs to happen, whether that's expressing the understanding that they need to go switch their political affiliation to libertarian, I need to take advantage, and you need and will after this class event today, take advantage of every single opportunity to make that happen, because the entire space that you're in, whenever you're in it, is the target rich environment. All right, thank y'all so much for listening. I appreciate y'all tremendously. I'm going to get some fucking mimosas.